Hello everyone, I hope you all are doing very well. In this video, our objective is to understand the CAG stack related with large language models. So our focus is large language models. So we know that large language models are designed or trained to take the text as an input and generate the text. In order to generate the text, First, these large language models, they have to understand what is the input. It means these large language models, they have to be trained so that they can understand, means whatever has been asked to perform, they should have ability to understand, process, means whatever they could understood, they, they can figure it out that how to process to generate the output and finally the generate and that generation is what you be you will see as the text so understanding processing and generating these are the three different activity happens within the scope of large language model so if we would want to understand the tech step related to large language models we have to have basic understanding of what is happening inside and that is what helps us to build a tech stack around large language models next thing you might ask okay what is the tech stack means here tech stack means that once the large language model is available how you can utilize it what technology you really needed in order to consume the large language models so building the large language model is not part of tech stack as per se. However, how to utilize the large language model in whatever method it is available and the build the application around it. And that is the focus of this video. Next, we know that the large language models are not something they are very small. They are really very large. And large in a sense, they are large enough, you just cannot use them anywhere you want. They have to be decided first that how you are going to utilize them. Okay, so let's take the large language model and we know that there are organizations such as OpenAI, Meta, Google, Microsoft, these companies like a very large companies generating these large language models. There are several organizations from China AI companies, they are generating large language models. There are a couple of labs such as uh, Big Science or uh, Neo, uh, I think Allure, Allure, I'm sorry, Euler, I think Euler is the best uh, if, I, if I remember, yeah. Euler is also generating the uh, large models. So the question comes that whether you are an organization where you are generating a large language model that is only available through API or there are other organizations which are generating the large language models and these large language models are available in several gigs of size so that anybody could use it in whatever math. So it means that there is a way you have ability to access these large language models through APIs or you can use them as a, so I would say that either API through or you can download and wherever you would want to download and you can use them. So at least we know that once a large language model is available, that large language model is accessible through the API or we can download wherever we want and then we can utilize it. So at least there is a one option and two options. So if we want to create an application by using the large language model, we know that these are the two options available for any software engineer or any organization to consume it. Now let's take the example of one and two. So one, as we know that OpenAI has a collection of large language models. We know that there is a chat GPT, there are variants of GPT, Turbo, GPT-3, GPT-3.5, GPT-4. So these are the very, very various large language models available, open AI, and the only way you can access is through the API. So in API, you just really need to know how 
to access the endpoints where the models are available so that you can connect your code and authenticate yourself. Once authentication is done, then you can start writing application. So for the API, you just really need to connect, connect, then authenticate, and then utilize. So these are the three options you have in order to consume any large language model which is accessible only through the API. And the example is OpenAI. Tomorrow, if Google is generating another model, they, they will definitely going to create that API so, are, so that you can access it. And if that is the case, you can also add that model here. And if it is available through X API, you can actually utilize the same method. However, the code could be different. There may not be a universal code which can connect two separate organization model, but it is very much possible that a couple of organizations, they are, or, or just the engineers, they can come up with a simple framework which can connect variety of different large language models accessible uh, at different endpoints by using a single code base which just use the particular keys in, in case of connect, you basically going to create connection and then you need to really provide your access keys. At that point, you really need to have the access key. And once you have access key, that will be used to authenticate. Once authenticate, you can utilize. And when you are utilizing, you are going to first tokenize your data. So if I, if I try to come and say, what do you need to do? You need to tokenize means all the input because in the large language model, what you really have is the input. So this is your input text. So whatever this input here is, you really have to tokenize it. That's the very first thing to do. Once tokenize is tokenization is done, then you really need to sequence the correct set because depending on your large language model, you are going to have a set means the size where this particular large language model is going to process these tokens. So for example, GPT-123, this the size of number of tokens is like a 512 in GPT-1, uh, 1024 in GPT-2, in GPT-3 and beyond is like a, a 2048. It means after the tokenization, the next step for you is to split the tokens. So it's or, or, or uh, I would say split the tokens. After the tokens are split, then you just really need to pass your tokens to the large language models. And then I, I would say at that time, connection is happening, authentication is done, now we are utilizing. So you can actually push tokens and based on that, you are going to get the results, result output, and then you are going to collect results. So these four things, you are going to perform in order to use a large language model which is accessible through API and these model could be op open uh, AI based model or any third party model you really uh, are accessing at this point. In the next step, we can take an example where the large language model has been created by a particular certain organization and that model is available as a downloaded blob of a binary object, which we could utilize it. So the question comes that if a large language model is available, how many ways you could get it out? So, so many organization, what they will actually do. So we have a large language model, which is available. So the large language model, which is available for Use users to consume not by API. There are a couple of ways. First, we know that will be in multiples of GP and gig, multiple of GB could be from one GB all the way to ten GB or even more. So it could be a very large size. It means you just cannot dump anything. Uh, it's sometimes uh, if users are using GitHub, then they could actually split it into the large file object, LFS, and that's where you can get from GitHub. Another very popular options available is the hugging phase, where you can get the model hosted there. And the third option is the block 
uh, stories. Like a block store can have really very large size of uh, file over there. So you can think about the Google Drive. You can also look into the uh, AWS S3, Azure Blob Storage, or there could be the, the Google, uh, Google Store as well. So there are several ways a large language model can be made available to organizations. And these are the various uh, methods available. However, if we look into how organizations really do uh, take care of the large language model deployment, which is available for public or they are making available to public, I would say that the most popular method as of now is to use the hugging phase. Because in the hugging phase, you can just let the model upload it there and then you can make it public and then when model is, is publicly available, you can actually build application around it directly at hugging phase by using the compute provided by the hugging phase. So here is an example of a model called, called chat GLM 6B. So this model has about 1 trillion tokens inside and this model size is quite in gigs but this model is from organization from a China that this model was made available as an open source model which is hosted at Hugging Face. So this model is hosted at Hugging Face and now when this model is hosted at Hugging Face then it comes again the role of your code how you can access it. In that case, if you would want to connect this model and you want to write the application, there are a couple of ways you could utilize it. And the utilization of that, uh, this particular model is, there are a couple of ways you could do. First, if you decide that you would want to utilize this model uh, direct at hugging phase. If you would want to create an application to consume a model which is already hosted at hugging phase, I am just showing you a very simple piece of code which is in front of uh, uh, you in this screen and you can say just using a few lines of code here the model is already available it's called the chat glm6 gb and that model here is the model and now you are just writing few lines of code where you got you are using the tokenizer once the tokenizer is really used then you are loading the model and once model is loaded and you are passing your text and then you are collecting the results. Uh, quite quite simple process. Everything is done on hugging face and then once this code you have app.py and then there are other files, you can actually take this app.py and you can deploy it. Deploy at back to hugging face. So you could take this code and you can deploy back to hugging face. So you are running full end-to-end -end application directly there. However, you can actually use also the Google Colab. So this was the first option. Second is, and you can write same kind of application here to Google Colab. The only thing is that you need to, you will be using the hugging face uh, authentication mechanism so that you can access the open source model which is available at the hugging phase. So in the Colab, you could actually access the model, model will be downloaded and then model will be loaded. But because this model size is really very big, it's, it's in several gigs and the free version of Colab is really very small GPU RAM. So you that model will not work. However, if you have a private version of Google Colab where you are paying for a certain size of resources, or uh, enterprise Google Colab, then you can actually utilize the Google Colab to write the application. So we have ch checked out two versions, Hugging Face, Google Colab, and there are several third-party uh, uh, runtime environment with computes available, which I do not uh, know here, which you can also do. The only thing is that in that scenario, you would have to take the model, download at your local file system, then the API which you are using, you can actually still use the uh, the transformer uh, package from the hugging phase and using the transformer you can actually just use the auto model and auto tokenizer which is the same as we have used here and you can still run the all code because when you are using this code at the Google Colab you can still use the Python transformer package. So the app stack or application which you are going to use to consume the large language model when the model is available as a downloadable then you can actually 
use these different methods to consume that model. Okay, that's okay. However, you can actually combine the API plus download where you are hosting the model, you are making that model available through API and then APIs are using that. So if you look into the, the method which you are accessing the Google Colab, which is exactly the same here, they are same method. You are tokenized, you are actually connecting then you are authenticating and during authentication you are using the hugging face authentication mechanism so you could access the model and after the model is authenticated then you are using the tokenizing and splitting is not really needed at this point in this code yeah split is not really needed and then you are sending your tokens which is the content and then you are going to collect the result so back to same place whether you are using api or whether you are using a deployed applicable model Wherever it is self-deployed or deployed at again face or any other uh, repo, you can utilize the model. One thing I just wanted to let you know that if the model is available in Hugging Face, you can connect to it because that's what Hugging Face environment does. GitHub does not provide that thing. If model is available in GitHub, then you need to download that model wherever you would want. And then once the model is downloadable, then you will follow everything as it is what we have just talked about so if we summarize what we have covered in this video we have large language models which are deployed two-way they are deployed at the organization so I would say they are remote deployed and in that scenario they are only accessible through the API and with this API if you are writing your applications you are going to connect, authenticate, and then once it is authentication is done, then you are going to utilize. The second option is that your model is actually available as a download. So I would say here, this is a downloadable model. It means you can download and host by yourself. Okay. Second, you can actually host it hugging face once it is available and hosted at the hugging face then you can actually use two ways to connect it first you can create an application at hugging face or you can actually write your application anywhere else and you can connect and that's where you can actually going to you are going to use the apis to connect and at the app at runs hugging face and while using the runtime or the compute available by the hugging face here you can create the apis and you can code anywhere something similar to that so i would say you can use this method and you can come back and connect the only thing code might be a little different whether here if download downloaded by yourself and if this is your option then you can take this model you can download wherever like if, if i if i have a uh, my own linux machine with a nvidia gpu in it i can actually download that model and i can download in my local machine so i would say local machine deployment in the local machine i will use the compute available in the local machine and it will be no connect no authenticate but you can utilize basically i will be using the same thing tokenizer once tokenizer is there, then if I really need to process the uh, text splitting in order to manage the, the size, uh, dictionary size of the model, I will do that part and then finally I will submit my request. So that option is also available and in that case you can write the code which is going to run locally and going to run the runtime or the compute in your local machine. So these are the various options you have available for anyone to utilize the large language models depending on in whatever flavor they are available to the user. Some of the images of this video are also available at the uh, descriptions or the details uh, section of this video. And besides that, you can also visit uh, my uh, GitHub repo named ProGram where you can also find the content related to this video and many other previous video which I have created. So that's all. I would wanted to share you in this video. I really enjoy creating these uh, whiteboarding videos. If you have something uh, request, please do let me know and I will cover your request. 
Thank you so much for your time and I'm looking forward to seeing you in my next video. Until then, thank you so much.